Hi, I'm Oliver and this is Deep Cuts, a channel dedicated to music for lovers of music. Well, thanks to all of you who watched, liked and commented on the Bowie Week videos that I put out last week. Had so much fun making them, it was, it was a blast, the medley was so much fun to do as well. Um, so thank you for supporting that and sharing it if you did across all your social media channels and all that sort of thing. The whole project made sure that I listened to a lot of David Bowie over Christmas. <laughs> I think I'm a little bit uh, worn out from him now, I'm not sure I'll be listening to him for the next few months, that's for sure. But yeah, thank you so much for everyone who's watched that and, and supported the channel through that week as well because it, it was a good week and I know there's a lot of new people subscribing so you know hello to you people and uh, welcome. So this is the first in the new Deep Cuts Essentials series. Once a month I'm going to pick an album that I think is essential and tell you why I think it is and I will be trying to avoid the most obvious records to keep it a bit more interesting so hopefully I'll introduce some of you to albums you haven't heard before or you haven't got around to listening to. That is my aim. So the first ever Deep Cuts Essentials record is Curtains by John Frusciante, a wistful, reflective, melancholic, forlorn record, and I love it. A quick primer for those of you that don't know, John Frusciante is mostly known in the mainstream as having been the Red Hot Chili Peppers guitarist. That's what he's primarily known for in the mainstream, but he's so much more than that as a musician. He has a solo career that has incredible depth shifting from funk to art rock to electronic music. And his first solo release was in 97, which was Neandro Lada's and usually just a t-shirt, which is a great record. And his last record under his name was in 2014 called Enclosure. Uh, since then in 2015, he released a record under the pseudonym Trick Finger, and that was a very acid house electronic focused record so yeah he's a very dynamic musician and he's released a lot of records since that initial solo record in 97. In 2004 to 2005 the man released an unbelievable spate of records Shadows Collide with People, The Will to Death, DCEP, Ataxia's Automatic Writing, uh, Sphere in the Heart of Silence, Inside of Emptiness and Curtains. They are all brilliant records in their own right. These six records, Not Counting Shadows Collide, were recorded in a period of six months straight after John had just got back from an 18-month touring stint with the Chili Peppers. Obviously felt like he really needed to get some stuff down after that. Um, and Curtains was recorded and mixed entirely in his home. Frusciante said in past interviews he can remember himself sitting in his living room recording this music. It was just me sitting on a pillow on my living room floor with my back leaning against the couch. That sort of slackened temperament I think comes across in the writing on this album. It's a collection of songs that are both sonically memorable but also crushingly and sad really. And it engenders an environment or an atmosphere that kind of makes you want to curl up in the fetal position and listen to this record. That's the feeling, the overwhelming feeling I tend to get uh, when I listen to this record. Sonically, it's an elegant confluence of acoustic rock and folk sensibility, utilising the timbres of instruments like acoustic guitar, electric guitar, piano, mellotron, synthesizers, bass and drums. It's not the sort of record I tend to listen to with other people. Music's really strange in that way. Sometimes music is at its most powerful when you listen to it with a group of people, so in a live performance setting. Sometimes that the feeling of sharing that experience is what makes it so powerful. However, there's other times where music feels so crushingly personal and intimate that it only feels right to listen to it on your own. My friends Matt and Jake, the guys that I did the David Bowie medley with, we were somewhat Frusciante fanboys when we first um, when we first became friends, and uh, we'd always get together and listen to his albums. We'd listen to Sphere in the Heart of Silence, we'd listen to uh, The Empyrean, Automatic Writing, but we rarely ever listened to Curtains together, despite all three of us loving it. I think we all tacitly appreciated it as one of those solitary pieces of work that just needed to be experienced alone, and part of that is to do with the painfully open-hearted way John approaches the lyricism on this record, as much as it is the spirit of his performance. First track, The Past Recedes, is deceptively simplistic, really, in terms of its musical framework. It's just the chords G, D, E minor, and A minor at the beginning. However, it's the way that John approaches the instrumentation with a respect that gives the song its power. John's lyrics here touch on the human realisation that we are but specks in the fabric of existence. Yeah, I know, cheery, right? <laughs> and the fact that when you eventually attain fame, it's hollow. It doesn't really give much to you. And the, the lyrics, they, they, those ideas, they carry so much weight because John is someone who's been in the limelight in one of the largest rock bands known in the mainstream, as well as 
suffering from a horrendous heroin addiction earlier on in his life that he's managed to kick. It just gives, just gives that lyricism and these thematic ideas so much more power. Why to be here you first got to die, so I gave it a try. And what do you know, time was so long ago. And things come back you see, to where they don't belong. And every drop of sea is the whole ocean. I lied to the greatest thieves about anything and everything. I'm a figure of forgotten speech. I'm out of reach. Third track, Anne, is one of the standouts of this brilliant record. And it, it shows John's implicit understanding of how powerful you can make a track by employing dynamics and contrast. The track begins in a fairly robust way with John strumming and singing, but then it dips into this very delicate phrasing. And it's one of those pieces of music that you almost hold your breath as you listen to it, as if, if you were to exhale, the music was gonna blow away because it's just so delicate and dainty and airy. It's a, it's a gorgeous section in this track. The double guitar solo at the end of the track with friend and Mars Volta genius Omar Rodriguez Lopez, um, it's less of a, a dual guitar solo and more of a sprawling, messy mimicry dripping in blues and distortion. And it's such a satisfying, climax to this track that only moments ago was so spacious and elegant. It's important at this point to mention how this record is capable of developing such an intimate atmosphere aside from the lyricism and the songwriting, and that is the recording process. After recording Shadows Collide, John admitted to himself that perhaps he had too much of a sense of perfection in the recording process of that album, and actually some of his favourite albums of all time are so timeless and special because of their imperfections, not in spite of them. Knowing this, he recorded the entire of the album on an Ampex 448 track, which is one of these. We used only one or two microphones to record the drums. I've never had such a good vocal and acoustic guitar sound as I do on that album. We bounce tracks where necessary, for instance, with the backing vocals. We do three tracks of harmonies, bounce them to one track, do the same again, put one of the two resulting tracks on the right and the other on the left, have a lead vocal in the middle and another harmony in the middle behind the lead vocal. These techniques of not cleaning up every single waveform, allowing things to be a little bit blemished in places, a bit rough around the edges, what that does is that takes the emotional intensity of the lyricism and the instrumentation, it harnesses that and it just creates something that feels so organic. Every moment kind of feels cellular. And you know, there's, a, there's something to be said for records that are cleaned up to within an inch of their life and they, are, um, they sound so clear on headphones and, and that works for some types of music, but this is absolutely the right production choice for a piece of music like this, for an album like this. If this album was really cleaned up it just wouldn't have the same emotional identity, the same, just the same feeling. You wouldn't get that feeling if that was the way the album was recorded. Seventh track, Your Warning, has an almost Baroque piano motif alongside John alternating between head voice and chest voice, and he's crooning, emptiness, replace my soul. And it's just, it's one of the most fragile and poignant moments of the entire record. And again, allowing the production to unfold and not tinkering with it too much just really adds to the emotional weight of the music. It's a, a gorgeous track. Final track, Leap Your Bar, is the most perfect way to end this 33 minute, 11 track album. The song unfurls like a performance inside your skull. If you wear it with headphones, you are so aware, like spatially aware of the music, and that's because all of the piano sounds are aligned or panned to the left side, and all of John's vocals are panned to the right. And that just does create this strange spatial awareness as you listen to the song. But also, I might be reading too much into this, However, the fact that John's vocals aren't central and they're panned off to the right, it feels like he's slightly out of reach, which obviously thematically really fits in to the, uh, the themes of the lyricism on this album. It just adds to that fragility and that sense of, of being maybe a little bit parallel to the world, not quite fitting in and trying to make sense of it. Uh, I could be reading too much into it, but that's how I, that's how I read this, this sonic listening experience of this song. Let me know what you guys think. If you've heard the track before, or if you listen to the album because of this video, then just listen to that track with headphones on and let me know what your thoughts are. I'm in a way, it seems. People are cold and mean. In the valley's noon, the things that I can find. Nothing simple soon. This stitches I can time. I was so bad. 
This album is seriously something special. And if you haven't listened to this album before, I hope this video convinces you to go out and do so. If you have listened to it before, then make sure you comment down below. I'm very passionate about John Frusciante and Curtain specifically. I love this album, love to speak to you guys about it. So let's get some comments and discussions going down below. Thanks for watching the first Deep Cut to Centrals video. I'll be back next month with another one and I'll be back next week with five albums to get you into post-punk. Finally, I'm sorry it's taken so long to get these videos out. It's because Bowie week was so intense and then Swans will be coming a couple of weeks after that as well. So I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not letting you guys down. The people that have been uh, harassing me for Swans and post-punk, it's happening. So look out for that and I will see you next week. Bye.